what's going on you guys welcome back to the channel today as you can see we're in the ml55 i gotta do some maintenance on this thing gonna try to do the transfer case fluid oil change and if we get to it both of the front and rear differentials if i got time so stay tuned stick with me if you guys want to see and just get an overall update of how this thing's been doing so after much back and forth i decided i'm gonna stick with the castro edge for the ml55 uh, for this oil change and probably continuously it did really well i think it's got a little under 7,000 miles since i last changed the oil on the castro edge and i think it only lost about half a quart to a quart and that's more so because the valve cover gaskets are bleeding pretty bad from the breather covers and from the back of the valve cover on one side so um, i also changed the oil cooler gasket in between between last time i changed the oil and now which helped stop a lot of the oil seeping out. So needless to say, I don't think it lost any oil uh, or burned anything from this. It just lost it from the gaskets. But for sure today, the ML55 is gonna stick with the Castrol Edge. This stuff has been excellent, has very good high heat protection and the TBN numbers, if you guys are oil nerds, Bob is the oil guy type of stuff, go in there and you look at the TBN numbers, they're very high. Um, even after you know 6,000 mile usage with uh, oil used analysis or used oil analysis so um, yeah definitely recommend this stuff it is Mercedes approved um, it's got all kinds of approvals 229.3 and 229.5 the Porsche A40 is a big one that's one that I've learned about recently and that's because Porsche tests all their oils that they approve with actual track usage. They don't approve an oil unless it meets the requirements on track. So you know that they're putting it through use and abuse and if it stands up to the test and gets the approval, that's a good one to look out for. So anything that has a Porsche A40 combined with MB approval, you can't really go wrong. Um, this oil has it, the Mobile One Zero W40 has it, the Pennzoil um, Ultra Platinum Zero W40 has it, and the Valvoline Advanced European Zero W40 has it along with a few others. Um, so. so yeah, I could really nerd out all day on uh, oil stuff and believe me, in between deciding what I was gonna use for these next changes for both the cars, I've been doing a ton of research, looking at all of the specs for them, looking at uh, used oil analysis, uh, virgin oil analysis. So if you're into that stuff at all, I highly recommend reading up on it on sites like Bob is the Oil Guy or NAS OIC or something like that. Um, Lots of good information out there, but you have to read thoroughly and read multiple, multiple sources to get kind of an overall picture of what you should be looking for, depending on what motor you're looking to run whatever said oil in, okay? I'm gonna stop talking about the oils now because I can go all day for this. I can make a whole video about what I found out about oils and all the different things, but to boil it down, if you're using any of kind of the name brands nowadays, and if you're looking for a Mercedes spec and it's a zero W40, anyone that makes a European spec zero W40 is probably gonna be a pretty good oil, um, but you still wanna look at their specs and oil analysis to see how they do after whatever mileage. For the C55, it honestly doesn't matter. I could run a conventional blend in there, a synthetic blend, full synthetic, whatever. I'm doing short intervals with that car. I usually change it like by 3,000 miles at most. With ML55, I usually change it six to 7,000 miles. That's my plan. Um, so I want something that can last a little bit longer and not diminish. Um, so the Castro Edge works perfectly for that. It's easily uh, available at Walmarts near me most of the time. And yeah, um, so I'm gonna stick with it for the ML55. All right, as you can see, here's the motor for the ML55. Like I said, I changed out this oil cooler gasket in between the last time I changed oil. That helped most of the significant leaks that were happening. The front of the engine was like caked in oil down here. It's already kind of cleaned itself off since I've done that. So without, you know, leaking from there anymore. Um, but my breather covers definitely need to be done. And on this side, same thing, you see a bunch of oil collecting down here. So those need to be done. Uh, trust me, I will do that soon, but I just haven't had the time recently and it's kind of doing fine. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and take a look at the dipstick and see how it's doing. I've let it sit for about five, 10 minutes since it uh, was driven. So it should be an accurate reading. I'll go ahead and pull this dip dipstick out and see what we get. This is after cleaning it off once and sticking it back in. You can see it's right at the max line. So perfect, sitting exactly where it needs to be. 
And the oil still looks, let me get it on my finger so you guys can see. Still relatively clear. I mean, not the most beautiful, but still definitely clear. It feels fine. No sediment or anything that I'm feeling in it. It feels fine. So we'll see what it looks like coming out the bottom. Um, I don't know what oil they were using in this thing before, but it was definitely dirty, dirty the first time I changed it. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, after a couple runs of this stuff, the engine will be uh, a lot cleaner internally than it was. Um, but I think, you know, luckily the owner that had it before me, he didn't have it very long. I don't think he was taking the best care of it. I think he was kind of doing what he could. But the owner that had it for the majority of the time before him, um, I think he took really good care of it because lots of signs on the car point to it being well cared for before my ownership. So this, the previous owner before me only had it for about half a year. Um, so the majority of his life was with the first owner. And yeah, uh, that's about it. If you're curious, I don't run the engine cover. It's sitting down here. I just feel like it just traps more heat. There's no real point in running it. Um, if I was going to show the car or something like that, I guess I'd put it on, but I'm not. It's pretty much our daily driver. So um, everything else looks fine. Our little cap for the uh, block off for that little uh, silencer thing is still working fine. Um, I checked the air filter recently, it's still doing fine. So yeah, time to get out of the car and start undoing all this mess. All right, so taking a look under here, things look pretty good. A lot better than when I first got the car. Everything is pretty dry. Um, the one thing that I know, I already knew of, the trans cooler lines definitely need to be changed. Um, you can see there's some seepage going on uh, on both of the connecting points, top and bottom. And then besides that, um, besides a little bit of residual oil that I just wiped off, the uh, power steering, or, or sorry, the uh, AC compressor right there. Um, everything else looks dry. It looks really good, even all the way back, back of the motor. I know that most of the oil that was leaking was coming from that oil cooler um, gasket. So after changing that, it's increased dramatically, um, taking away some of the wet spots. Back here, you can definitely see there's still leaking going on. The worst spot that is uh, happening right now on the valve covers is the passenger side in the rear. So you can see some of that is just from seeping back there forever. Uh, so I'll have to clean that off and then kind of monitor it as I go. Uh, but yeah, everything else, this car is in good shape for how old it is. And besides, you know, the peeling, weatherproofing or whatever Mercedes was trying to do back then with this coating stuff. Besides that, the underbody of this car um, looks fantastic. I mean, for being a 20 year old SUV that's that was doing winter passes pretty much its whole life. Yeah, it's solid. So anyways, um, here's the drain plug. The nice thing about the M155, there is only one drain plug versus the C55 and some others with the M113. So I think that's like a 13 millimeter if I remember correctly. 13 or 14, um, and that's the only thing. It does not use a gasket uh, or a uh, O-ring, copper O-ring, anything like that. Uh, I used it without one last time because it didn't have one before. And from looking online, it seems like you don't need one for this motor. So uh, you can see it's dry, hasn't been leaking at all. So I will do the same thing I did last time and run it without one. And besides that, yeah, we're just gonna drain this out undo the filter up top and yeah i usually like to undo these first just to let it kind of aerate as the oil is draining we'll give it a solid you know 15 minutes or so to drain all the oil it can get out of there and then we will go ahead and fill it back up put the new filter in and pretty all right so the oil cap is off you got to use one of these if you have them handy uh i gotta get this thing out this came off at the top of the cap so i'll have to stick that back on not a big deal, um, but you just wanna pull this out so it's just sitting in here and then I usually just let it sit in here while the oil is draining. As soon as you pull this out of the socket, you can hear a lot of the oil drain down to the bottom. So that's why I recommend doing this before you undo the uh, drain pan bolt. And then I just let it sit and try to get as much oil out before I pull it out. All right, we're all ready to go down here. By the way, you don't need to jack up the car. I was more so just doing it to take a look at everything. 
So it's actually easier if you don't have a jack because then your jack stands where they would normally go would be in the way of your catch pan. And yeah, so makes it easier. It is a 13 millimeter, like I said, or thought. And I will drain this out now and we'll see how it looks. All right, I know this has been the internet craze lately. I'm trying to get your drain pan bolts out without getting any oil on your fingers. Let's see if we can do it. Otherwise, I'm not putting this in the video. <laughs> just kidding let's see you got to get the trick is you got to get it all the way unthreaded and then pull away once it's already done unthreading so there it is i can feel it it's pretty much ready to go almost hopefully this doesn't shoot farther than my oil pan yeah i think it's ready to go Well, I think I failed that one, guys. <laughs> Got the uh, oil filter out. And looks like it did its job this time. It's quite dirty. This is actually the dirtiest one I've seen in a while. It's way dirtier than any of them that I've ever changed my C55 has been, even in longer intervals. So I think it did its job for sure. And I think this engine is starting to clean out the crud of whatever oil the previous owner was using for however many oil changes he did. But um, here's the kit. I always use man filters. Some people told me, oh, let's check out the synthetic filters, but the synthetic filters don't have this binding on them. And this binding is really important because it keeps it as one, you know, conical structure. The synthetic ones that I've seen, everyone always shows pictures of them collapsing or folding and they just don't hold up. So these are like a fleece, polyester, something like that filter. So these do the job, no problem. Um, shouldn't have to worry about it. These are what is recommended. So um, yeah, I always use those. Okay, uh, inside of here, doesn't look too bad. And we'll see how the pan looks here in a second. I'll pull it out. That was an epic fail. I forgot how far, <laughs> how far um, the oil launches. Just because since there's only one drain plug on this car, you know, it's got all the fluid right there just sitting, waiting to come out. And I should have remembered um, last time how far to the left it ends up shooting out. So next time when I start my uh, drain pan, it's probably gonna be positioned somewhere over here rather than over here. Uh, so yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Epic fails do well on YouTube. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. got a good laugh. It wasn't too big a deal. Rest in peace to a few towels that had to do the cleanup, but that's about all. I'll go ahead and get this capped off and we'll put the new filter in and fill it up and then we'll move on to the transfer case. All right, all cleaned up. Here's the spent oil. Um, it doesn't look too bad, to be honest. I mean, pretty dirty, but nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I sifted the magnet wand through it and didn't find anything. Uh, this oil pan has some residuals of all kinds of fluid that have been drained in it, but yeah, still didn't find anything uh, bizarre. No metal shavings or anything like that. So looking good. Go ahead and throw in the new filter and fill it up. The ML55 takes eight and a half quarts, a little bit different than couple other m113s the c55 takes nine quarts you could probably get away with running nine quarts in here to be honest but i'll just do eight to eight and a half and that keeps me a quart and a half to keep on hand should i ever need to top it off or use for the c55 to top off all right new gaskets are all on on the oil filter housing it always comes with um this one for the top it's inside of the housing but i never put that one on i don't know i think it's a common thing that mercedes people throw out Shout out to the subscriber who told me about that one. Last time I showed oil change, I didn't know what that one was every time I got the kit. But yeah, it's for the top one, but I don't know, I never change it. It's not a big deal. So I'll screw this in. And basically my trick is, or my method is, I basically get it all the way down hand tight, which I might need to wipe this off because my hands are all oily, but I'll get it hand tight up to the line and then I'll just give it kind of a twist with that tool and then fill it up. 
All right, well, since we had great luck with uh, the drain pan bolt, I figured I'm gonna use a funnel today because uh, I don't want any second mishaps, so. So yeah, this one, like I said, it's eight and a half quarts. So almost two full containers. These are both five quart containers. And the ML55 has this kind of weird uh, like filter thing on the top of the um, oil cap housing. So you can't just let a funnel sit in there, it'll fall out. You have to kind of uh, hold on to it. It doesn't, it doesn't have anywhere good to sit. Does anyone else do this or you guys just cap it off after it stops draining fast? <laughs> I actually sit here for a little bit and just let it drain all the way out. Maybe I'm cheap. <laughs> no, nah, rather I just not wasteful. I feel like it's waste if I don't get what I can out of here. Once it starts dripping, then yeah, we're good. <clears throat> all right, and then the second one, of course, I only need four quarts out of here, so I'll just pour for a while and then check it a couple times to make sure I'm not getting past the point. We're almost there, we got about half a quart to go. Got to finesse it. Check it there. Almost there. All right. We are right at about a quart and a half. You can see that. Not exactly level here, but got a quart and a half left in there. That means we have put eight and a half quarts in the motor. And I'll go ahead and button this up. And we'll be good to go for the oil change. All right, we've moved on to the transfer case. Don't think I'm gonna to get to the differentials today, but I'm very glad I did this. This fluid was black. I don't know when the last time this has been changed. No record of it. Uh, the drain bolts and the fill bolts are both uh, 3 8 ratchet. No socket or anything, you just stick the ratchet straight in them. These are both fairly easy to get off. Uh, of course, always try to undo the fill bolt first before you undo the drain bolt, uh, which I did, no problem. It looks like it's basically just a fill um, until it starts seeping because when I undid the fill bolt, a uh, tiny bit was dripping out. So that's good. It was full. I will make sure to put um, same capacity back in to where it's dripping out and then I'll put the bolt or the uh, drain plug in. So I'm just going to let this drain out for a little bit and then I will refill it. I'm going to be using this for uh, the fill and the transfer case. Uh, anything like Dex3, anything synthetic like that will work. Um, this is Max Life. You can see it's compatible with Dex2, Dex3, Dex6, um, all kinds of things. Mercedes Nag1. This is what I used to use for the C55 transmission and for this uh, transmission. So this is good for 722.6s and it's also good for the transfer case and the W163. All right, so what I'm going to do to fill this up. I just got this bowl filled up, the ATF in there, and then I have my pumping apparatus. Just gonna pump it through this way. The bottle could have fit under here, but it was just easier to do it this way. So this is a pump I got from FCP Euro. I went ahead and cycled some of the old, through, old fluid through it just to make sure there was no uh, dip fluid or uh, manual transmission fluid left over in it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pump the new stuff into this transfer case. And you see the fill bolt is right there kind of partially threaded in and yeah I'll update you guys how it goes everything was smooth super easy to get filled up it probably took about I don't know a quart and a half two quarts uh wasn't very much I filled up that bowl like one and a half times basically so there it is all right everything's checked out I'll go ahead and start it up real quick
All right, besides the classic secondary air pump wine, <laughs> uh, everything seems good. I'm at uh, about 154,368 miles. So I know my next oil change will be in the 160,000s. Yeah. Really glad I did the transfer case too. That was uh, probably more needed than the oil change. All right, so for about an hour and a half of work, I mean, two hours at most, uh, happy I got this done. I was taking my time. I go slow with these things. So yeah, if I was rushing, could have done a lot faster, but I don't rush. I just take my time with it. Anyways, you can see it's already dark out. Get the dark fast up here. It was only like three o'clock when I got here. It's five o'clock now and it's already like pitch black outside. So that's Washington. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hit me up in the comments. Tell me, what do you guys think? What, what oil should I run in the C55? I'm debating. I've got like either a Valvoline 0W40 mixed with the VR1, half and half, or all 0W40 from Valvoline, or stick with the Castro Edge, or try something else out. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? What do you recommend? And we'll see what we got. So thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>